Today on MTG Unpacked, we're cracking open another Commander 2019 deck. This time it is Mystic Intellect, so that is blue, red, and white are the colors. And the commander here is Savin the Chronoclasm, so we'll check that out in a moment. Let's move these guys out of the way and get a closer look here. So thanks to his brilliant mind, Savin excelled at the Tolarian Academy but quickly grew restless with books and study. And you can see we get some other legendary creatures here. Also get a deck box, 100 card deck with 17 new cards, 10 double-sided token cards, and of course the foil oversized commander cards, strategy insert and reference card. Let's get stuck into it. And if you have not checked out the previous videos in the series, I'll pop a link to the commander playlist where you can see the reviews for those, along with other commander decks we've looked at in the past. Okay, so we get a nice deck box here. And we'll take a look at the foil. These oversized cards are cool. Foil, Savin Chronoclasm, Legendary Creature, Human Wizard 2-2 for 5. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to Savin the Chronoclasm. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard each turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Very cool. So set that aside, get stuck into it here. And of course we have the main deck. Nice little deck box there. And a flyer. So this tells you about the deck. Let's have a look. So we have Primary commander is Svin, secondary commander is El Elsha of the Infinite, and Pramicon Sky Rampart. So this one is about the flashback mechanic. So lots of blue spells there, white and red as well. A bit about the commander rules. So you have your 100 card deck, 40 life is the starting total. And then on the back, Savin the Chronoclasm, Elsha of the Infinite. Hamacon, Sky Rampart, and Gerard Weatherlight Hero. So we will get stuck into it here, and incidentally, these decks cost me 125 bucks total, so that was for all four. I think it was a decent deal. I know the uh, prices have gone up this year, unfortunately. So they probably can't push that too much higher. Unless they really ramp up the value and these are also seems like they're in short supply So if you are planning to pick some up and you have not already now might be the time if you can afford it Okay, so let's take a look at the mana base here We have an exotic orchard. It's land tap for one mana of any color that a land and opponent controls could produce I've seen this in the other decks so far prairie stream so you can tap it for white or blue. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. Commander's Sphere. Here's a nice one. Artifact. Tap. Add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. You can sack it and draw a card. This one's colorless, so probably good for lots of commander decks. We get an Is It Locket or Isn't It? You can tap for blue or red. And if you pay various color combos here, four of blue or red or any combination thereof, tap, sack it, you get to draw two cards. And of course, how could we forget the soul ring, artifact for one, you can tap, add two mana of colors, right, so planes, let's see how many of these we get, one, two, three, Nine of those, okay. So we had a couple of artifacts mixed in there as well. We get one, two, three, we got, yeah, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight of those, islands, and finally mountains. Four of those, okay. So there may be some others scattered around in the main deck, we shall see. Here's another one that seems to be pretty popular in these decks, we have Ash Barons. So land, you can tap, add colorless mana, basic land cycling one. So you pay one, discard this card, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. And next up we have an Azorius Chancery, enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. 
tap it for white and blue. Boros Garrison, Enter the Battlefield tap. When it enters the Battlefield, return land you control to its owner's hand. Tap it for red and white. We get a Boros Guildgate, Enter the Battlefield tapped. You can tap it for red or white, not both. And you'll notice a lot of these enter tapped, so if you were planning to upgrade these decks, that's probably a good starting point. Add some shock lands or something. Next up we have a command tower. Tap, add one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity. This one's pretty popular in these as well. And commander in general. Evolving Wilds. Basically just searching your deck for a basic land. Highland Lake. Enters tapped. Add blue or red. Is it? Boiler Works. Another one that enters tapped. When it enters battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. You can add blue and red. Okay, so lots of different colour combos here. Got the Is It Guildgate, blue or red. Myriad Landscape, I've seen this in the other ones as well. Enters tap, add colourless mana, pay two, tap, sack it. Search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type. Put them onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Mystic Monastery, another one entering tapped. You can add either blue, red or white. Gives you a few more options. Stone Quarry for red or white. Swiftwater Cliffs, blue or red. And when it enters Battlefield, you gain one life. Temple of the False God. You can tap it, add two colorless mana. Activate this ability only if you control five or more lands. Nice. Terramorphic Expanse. Another land. Tap, sack it, search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto Battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Tranquil Cove, so another life gain, tap for white or blue. Windscarred Crag, gain life, red or white. And discover more magic. What is your favorite magic format? We have Standard Booster Draft, Commander, or maybe you play Modern or something else. Leave a note in the comments. Okay, let's dig in here. So this uh, color combo as well, also known as Jeskai. And we'll see a bunch of the flashback mechanic here as well. So we've got a smaller version of Savine Necronoclasm. Very cool. Next we have Elsha of the Infinite Legendary Creature, Jin Monk. Some nice foiling there. 3-3 three, three for 5 mana. Has prowess. So whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. You may look at the top card of your library any time, and you may cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature, non-land card, and you may cast it as though it had flash. Alrighty, and yeah, we've got... <laughs> this is an interesting creature. Pramicon Sky Rampart. Legendary creature, Wall. Yes, that's the thing in Magic. 1-5 for 3. As Flying and Defender, and as it enters the battlefield, choose left or right. Each player may attack only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction, and Planeswalk is controlled by that opponent. Hilarious. Okay. So we'll move those aside, and then we'll take a look at some tokens. So double side, we have a Spirit or a Human. That's pretty cool. Okay. Pegasus. Another Human. Drake. And another human. Okay, so there's probably going to be a lot of human generation here. Another drake. Some treasure. Another human. I hear you like humans and treasure. There we go. Plenty of tokens there. Okay, next we have Cliffside Rescuer. So I think this was in one of the other decks as well. Creature Core Soldier 222 has Vigilance Tap. Sack it, target permanent you control gains protection from each of your opponents until end of turn. So it can't be blocked, targeted, dealt damage, enchanted, or equipped by anything controlled by those players. Next up we have Leadership Vacuum. Target player returns each commander they control from the battlefield to the command zone. Draw a card. That is a bit of a game changer right there. Bloodthirsty Blade. So this is an equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and is goaded. So it attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able for one. You can attach it to a creature and opponent controls. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So that's another one we've seen before. Scare Tiller. 
Let's say, Scarecrow, when it becomes tapped, choose one. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Another one we saw before, Ghostly Prison. So this is a fun little enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you. Make them pay for it. Prismatic Strands. So prevent all damage at sources of the color of your choice with deal this turn. And here we go with Flashback. Tap an untapped white creature you control. You may cast this card from your graveyard for its flashback cost, then exile it. Okay, Purify the Grave. Exile target card from a graveyard. You can do flashback for a single white. Ray of Distortion. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Has flashback four and two white. So getting a little extra use out of these spells from the graveyard. Chemister's Insight, draw two cards, has Jumpstart. So you may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs, then exile this card. Okay, so a surprising amount of graveyard interaction here. Target player draws two cards. Deep Analysis, flashback one and a blue, and you also have to pay three life for that one. And you can make the target player yourself. Fact or fiction? Will the top five cards of your library and opponent separates them into two piles? Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Fervent Denial. Counter target spell. And flashback five and two blue. Mystic Retrieval. Return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Flashback two and a red. Una's Grace. So wasn't that the Queen of the Fae? Leave a note in the comments if you know about that. Target player draws a card, has retraced. So you may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other costs. Some nice artwork on that one. Runic Repetition. Return target XO card with flashback you own to your hand. Secrets of the Dead. An enchantment whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, draw a card. Okay, so we're getting a lot of card draw, a lot of bringing things back from the graveyard. Think twice, draw a card, flashback two and a blue. And moving on to some red here, we have Burning Vengeance. I bet that would be a cool foil. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, Burning Vengeance deals two damage to any target. Desperate Ravings, yes, that's me, here I am. Draw two cards and discard a card at random. Flashback two and a blue. Faithless Looting, here's a good one. Draw two cards and discard two cards. Has flashback two and a red. Gutter Snipe, Creature Goblin Shaman. Two, two for three. Good to see the goblins. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Gutter Snipe deals two damage to each opponent. Rolling Timblor. So this one deals damage to each creature without flying. As flashback four and two red. Okay, so we're halfway through. Now we have a crackling drake, creature drake, star four for four with flying. Its power is equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. And when it enters battlefield, draw a card. It is pretty good. Farm to market. I think this is from Arm and Cat originally. So farm is an instant for three. Destroy target attacking or blocking creature and market has aftermath. So cast this spell only from your graveyard, then exile it. Draw two cards and discard two cards. Next up we have Armillary Sphere. So this is an artifact. Pay two, tap, suck it. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. And that one's been in a couple of the other decks as well. Azorius Locket. Artifact, you can tap it for white or blue. And you pay various combinations of white or blue. Four of those. Tap, sack it, draw two cards. Burnished Heart. Here's another good one. Artifact Creature Elk. Two, two for three. Pay three, sack it. Search your library for up two basic land cards. Put them onto a battlefield tap. Then shuffle your library. And we've got a rare here. Mandate of Peace. Instant for two, cast a spell only during combat. Your opponents can't cast spells this turn. Nice. End the combat phase. Meaning you remove all attackers and blockers from combat. Exile all spells and abilities from the stack, including this spell. 
And some of these are the uh, new cards that you'll only find in this deck. Sevens Reclamation, I think this is one of them. Sorcery for three. Return target permanent card with convert mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If this spell was cast from a graveyard, you may copy this spell and may choose a new target for the copy. And here we've got the flashback again for four and a white. Thalia's Geist Caller. Lifelink. 3-1 for 3. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, create a 1-on one -one white spirit creature token with flying. Okay, so that's how we generate those. Sack a spirit, and it gains indestructible until end of turn. Mass diminish. Until your next turn, creatures target player controls have base power and toughness 1-1. One -one. Nice. Transformed from butte to cute. Okay, flashback 3 and a blue. So make those other creatures fairly harmless. Wall of Stolen Identity. Creature Shapeshifter Wall. Another one. You may have Wall of Stolen Identity enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Except it's a wall in addition to its other types and has Defender. And when you do, tap the copy creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's untap set for as long as you control Wall of Stolen Identity. Uh, moving back to some red here. We have Backdraft Hellkite. Creature Dragon 4-4 four, four, for 5 with flying. Whenever it attacks each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. Nice. Flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. And another goblin. Dockside Extortionist Creature Goblin Pirate. 1-1 one, one for 2. We love the goblins indeed. When he enters the battlefield, create X treasure tokens. So that's where those are coming from. Where X is an number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. Treasure tokens are artifacts with tap, suck this artifact, add one mana of any color. Another red one here, ignite the future. Exile the top three cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. If this spell was cast from a graveyard, you may play cards this way without paying their mana costs. And this one's pretty costly for flashback seven and a red. And a legendary creature just tucked in here. We have Gerard Weatherlight Hero, 3-3 three, three for 4 with First Strike, and when he dies, exile it and return it to the battlefield, or oh, return to the battlefield all artifact and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. Sounds like a bit of a game changer. Next up we have Empowered Auto Generator. What is this? Enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap, put a charge counter on it, and add X mana of any one color where X is the number of charge counters on Empowered Auto Generator. Seems like something you'd have in uh, Kaladesh or Aether Revolt. And a mythic Pristine Angel. Creature Angel 4-4 four, four for 6 with flying. As long as Pristine Angel is untapped, it has protection from artifacts and from all colors. Whenever you cast a spell, you may untap Pristine Angel. So this is one you might want to include in an Angel deck. If you have one of those, another Mythic. Sun Titan, Creature Giant, 6-6, six, 4-6 six, six mana with Vigilance. Whenever it enters battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with command mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And another Mythic, holy moly, Clever Impersonator. So this is a creature shapeshifter, 0, zero for 4. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. Interesting. And here is a Planeswalker, Ral Zarek. Legendary Planeswalker, Ral, 4 loyalty for 4. So he's plus 1, tap target permanent, then untap another target permanent. Minus 2, he deals 3 damage to any target, and minus 7. Flip five coins, take an extra turn after this one for each coin that comes up heads. Okay. And back to just the regular rares. We have Divine Reckoning. Each player chooses a creature they control. Destroy the rest. Flashback five and two white. And we have Dusk to Dawn. Dusk is a sorcery for four. Destroy all creatures with power three or greater. And Dawn is a sorcery for five. Has Aftermath. Return all creature cards with power 2 or less from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, what is this? Increasing devotion. Create 5 one, one white human creature tokens. Good thing we've got tons of those. The spell was cast from a graveyard. Create 10 of those tokens instead. Holy moly. 
Those flashback seven and two white, so they certainly make you pay for those extras. Storm Herd, create X one one white Pegasus creature tokens with flying where X is your life total. Oh my, that could get out of control quickly. And here's one for the Dino fans, Zetalpa Primal Dawn. Legendary creature, Elder Dinosaur, 4-8 for 8 mana with flying, double strike, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. What else do you need, I ask you? And now we have Jace's Sanctum. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less cast. How many of you cast an instant or sorcery spell? Scry one. And now we've got a very curious River Kelpie. What the heck is that? Creature Beast 3-3 three, three for, what is that, 5. Whenever it or another permanent enters the battlefield from a graveyard, draw a card. And whenever a player casts a spell from a graveyard, draw a card. It has Persist. So when this creature dies, if it had no minus one, minus one counters on it, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Okay, so we're on to the blue now, apparently. Tauran Sky Summoner, Legendary Creature Merfolk Wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2 2 blue Drake creature token with flying. And back to red. Devil's Play! Deals 8 damage to any target flashback X and 3 red, and regular cost here is X and a single red. Increasing Vengeance! Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. If the spell was cast from a graveyard, copy that spell twice instead. Nice! You may choose new targets for the copies and flashback 3 and 2 red. Magma Quake deals X damage to each creature without flying in each planeswalker. We're getting close to the end now, just a couple more cards. Pristine Skywise, Creature Dragon, 6 4 for 6 mana with flying. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, untap Pristine Skywise. It gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. And finally, here we have Refuse and Cooperate. So Refuse is an instant for 4, Refuse deals damage to target spells, controller equal to that spells, converted mana cost, and Cooperate has Aftermath, instant for 3, copy target instant or sorcery spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. Alright, so that is the deck, so a lot of flashback stuff going on here. What is your preferred mechanic? What do you think of this deck, or do you prefer the... Uh, other two we've looked at so far, and we've got one more to go later on today, so stay tuned for that. Let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for more Magic the Gathering unboxings, and be sure to tap the notification bell to be notified as soon as new videos are released. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.